Settings are an important part of wildlife photography, but knowing which ones to use can be difficult. So in this video, we're going to be talking about ISO and how to use that with wildlife photography. So are you ready? Let's get started. ISO is often the last setting that I set when doing wildlife photography. The reason for this is because I find shutter speed and aperture to be more important. Animals are often moving and therefore setting a fast shutter speed is important to freeze that movement. Sometimes the environment that you are shooting in can have a busy background and therefore it is important to use a small depth of field to blur out that busy background. Or if the animal is moving a lot, a bigger depth of field can actually be useful in ensuring that it is in focus. So when it comes to ISO, I'm gonna say don't worry too much. Of course, if your ISO is too high, your images are going to come out grainy. But modern cameras are great at dealing with this grain and there's also some amazing software on the market for removing grain from images. But for those of you that still want to know the answer to what is the best ISO for wildlife photography, my answer is always going to be the lowest ISO that you can get. If it is a bright sunny day and your animal is out in the sun, then you might be able to put your ISO down to 200, like I did with this butterfly. But if it's not a sunny day or your animal is hiding in the shade, like this macaque, then you might need to lift your ISO up higher. This photo was taken at 1600 ISO. At night time, you will need to put your ISO up even higher. These tarsiers are very sensitive to light and move very quickly, making them very hard to photograph. The only light we had was a very faint red head torch. Therefore, I had to max out my ISO and then convert the images to black and white to get rid of that red light and hide most of the grain. I have no set ISO for wildlife photography. It really depends on what subject I am photographing, the light that's available, how much they are moving, and the depth of field that I want. I know that I've not given you an exact number as an answer to this question, but I hope that my explanation has made you understand ISO a little bit better and give you an idea of how to work with ISO when photographing wildlife. If you haven't found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to get more tips and tricks on how to improve your wildlife photos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye bye.